Hi there, it's Krista Watson of Krista Quilt, and I'm excited to share with you my spray basting tutorial using my infrastructure quilt, but you can apply this technique to any quilt that you choose. Now the first thing we need to do is spray the backing wrong side up. I like to use 505 basting spray and I've set up in my backyard on an inexpensive plastic table. You can do this method using a drop cloth on the ground or any place you have a well ventilated area. Now the reason that I like to spray the top and backing separately is it makes it much easier for the quilt top assembly later on. I'm using a generous amount of the 505 basting spray and I'm making sure that I spray all areas of the backing. Now it's time to spray the quilt top in the same manner, wrong side up, spreading it nice and easy over my table so that I can reach all areas of the quilt. If some of it sticks up or sticks to each other, I can just pull it apart very easily. Once both of these are done, I fold them up and I bring them indoors. Now it's time to bring the layers indoors and I assemble them on my design wall. If you want to check out the tutorial on how to make a design wall, make sure you see the comments section below. Now, if you don't have a design wall, you can do the same thing on a flat surface such as a table and you don't need a very big area. You can just work on one section of the quilt at a time. So first of all, I'm pinning my backing wrong sides up to my design wall and I'm using a long acrylic ruler to smooth out any wrinkles or any bubbles. This will take me a few minutes, but I make sure I keep going until everything is nice and flat. Now it's time to add the batting in the same way. I'm pinning it to the top of my design wall, letting gravity do its thing so that it hangs down nice and smooth. I'm placing a few pins at the top and you'll notice that my batting is going to be much bigger than my quilt top. It's also hanging down below the backing, but I'm gonna trim all that away later. The important thing is I have enough room to spread out the quilt top in just a minute so that I don't come up short. I'm going to use my long acrylic ruler to again smooth out every inch of the batting. I'm also pressing it together so it's going to stick nice and good, but it's not stuck. You can also press your batting if you have any wrinkles or any bubbles that you need to work out ahead of time. And finally, it's time to add the quilt top to complete our quilt sandwich. Now with this one, I'm gonna take a little bit more time because there's a lot more smoothing to do. I'm layering all three layers on my design wall and again, because there's the 505 basting spray on the back of my quilt top, it's going to stick to the batting, but I can still reposition it if necessary. I use my long acrylic ruler to smooth out every seam and every row of this quilt. I can also do some blocking and tame any seams that are wobbly right now. I smooth them out nice and even in place, and this part takes me the longest of all three layers. So I'll take a few more minutes, smooth it all out, and then we're ready to move on. Now that the layers are assembled, I want to trim up a lot of that extra batting and backing. I'm using specialty batting scissors that cut through like butter, and I trim all around the sides. I'll trim the top later once I pull it down. I just can't reach it right now. I'm only leaving about an inch all the way around so that the extra doesn't flip under me while I'm quilting. Don't you hate it when that happens? The final step of my basting process is to take the quilt to the ironing board and I like to iron both sides, the back and the front. This does two things for me. First of all, it sets the glue and second of all, it's the last chance I have to completely smooth out the quilt one final time. It's gonna take me several minutes to press the entire quilt, 
But one thing that makes it easier is I'm using what's called a big board. It's a big plywood board that sits on top of my ironing board and it gives me lots of room to work. So we'll just wait a little bit until I'm finished with the back and then we'll flip it over to the front. See that wrinkle that's starting to form on the back? No problem, I'm gonna go back and iron that before I flip it to the front to finish. So now I'm ready to iron the front of the quilt and it'll be ready for quilting. I'm so excited. I'm using a hot, dry iron and the process of ironing both sides of the quilt smooshes it all together nicely and helps set the glue. The best part about spray basting is that every single inch of the quilt is sticking to every other inch and there's no shifting while quilting. There's also no pesky pins getting in the way and nothing to disturb my fun quilting process. So I'm going to take a few more minutes and iron the rest of this quilt and then it's ready for the next step, machine quilting. My favorite part! To purchase the pattern and supplies to make this quilt, visit shop.kristaquilts.com.